He was six short of the 500 mark, the measuring stick for all-time home run hitters. On opening day, Bonds moved one notch closer and began the march that would see him routinely catch and surpass some of the biggest names in the game. Number 500 came on April 15th, fittingly against the Dodgers. Deep to right field! This one is on its way to McCovey Cove! Number 500! It's into the water! It was just like this whole weight just fell off my whole shoulders. I, I felt like, like I graduated from high school, you know, that, that whole graduation thing. I, I, I entered into a class that I only know, I know a whole lot about, but I never had the opportunity to go through that door. There was such an air of anticipation. It was the Dodgers, it was the bottom of the eighth inning, and it won the game. It couldn't have been scripted better. I don't think the Dodgers love to get us for stopping the game, but that what that was something memorable. So memorable, in fact, that the event is now permanently commemorated outside the right field wall here at Pac Bell Park. There's a plaque and Bond's handprints in the concrete, the only historic event so designated in the two-year history of the stadium. But Bond's season for the ages was just beginning. The who's who of home run hitters began clicking by like an odometer on a cross-country trip. Eddie Murray at 5.04, Mel Ott at 5.11, Eddie Matthews and Ernie Banks at 5.12. When the Giants played a May 29th game against the Arizona Diamondbacks, Bonds was one homer behind Ted Williams and Willie McCovey's total of 5.21. Bonds, well to center, Finley back at the wall, out of here! Look out! Jimmy Fox, here comes Barry Bonds. Jimmy Fox would be passed. So would Mickey Mantle, Mike Schmidt, and Reggie Jackson. By the middle of the season, the comparisons to the home run paces of McGuire, Maris, and Ruth were in full swing. And a funny thing began to happen to Bonds. The guy who had previously had a stormy relationship at best with the media and the fans seemed to be enjoying the ride. I think he must have said to himself, you know, what are honor it is to go through having a chance to do this, even if you fail, to have the chance to, to do it. And why not enjoy it? And I think when the fans began to see Barry enjoying himself playing the game of baseball, they began to react to him in a different and better way than they had before. And it wasn't just in the Bay Area that Bonds was being appreciated. He was cheered in Colorado. He was cheered in LA. Giants went to Houston the final week of the season, two teams battling for playoff spots. The Astros were booed for their decision not to pitch to Barnes. They probably worried about him so much that they ended up losing the games. But amazingly, he kept his focus, uh, wasn't selfish by taking the walk, letting Jeff do the damage so that we were in a position to win the games. And in the end, still got a pitch or two that uh, you know he, he made history with. There's a high drive deep into right center field, and Bonds has hit number 70 into the upper deck. <laughs> he has tied McGuire. I mean, those are the home runs that you, you sort of dream of, you know, special, that uh, you know you hit it at contact, and, uh, and uh, you know, he stood and put his hands up, and, you know, that sort of fell out of his hand. And, and then uh, another great moment is he, uh, he got to have a son there and his family. So now there were two. On Friday, October 5th, Bonds became the only Major League Baseball player to top the 70 home run mark. There's a high drive deep into right center field to the big part of the ballpark. Number 71, and what a shot! And Barry Bonds is now the home run king. There's a high drive. Grissom back in center field. He's all the way back to the wall. Number 72. Oh, man. 72 and counting for Barry Bonds. Bonds would get to 73 on the final day of the season. But the cruel irony in his accomplishment was that on the night when Bonds became baseball's all-time single-season home run king, the Giants were eliminated from playoff contention. The pain of that night, the way it ended, you know, will, will last with us for a long time. Yet the, the joy of the accomplishment will also last with us for a long time. So we're forever 
that night, that Friday night, will forever be bittersweet. Here's the payoff. A floater to Bonds, and he hits it high. It was said before when McGuire reached 70 three years ago, but it's hard to imagine anyone surpassing Bonds' record season anytime soon. As we continue on the road to 73, we catch up with Willie Mays, who has a story or two about Barry's younger day. No, he didn't listen to that. <laughs> that is something strange. <laughs> no, he, he was just like any other kid. It's Thanksgiving weekend, and to celebrate, your Toyota dealer is offering 0% APR financing on a generous helping of great cars and trucks. Choose from Sienna. Avalon, Solara, Echo, Celica, Corolla, Forerunner, and Tundra. Big selection, 0% financing. But you'd better hurry, because Thanksgiving weekend and 0% financing end Monday. So see your Toyota dealer today. Sometimes you want to take a close look at your long-distance phone bill. Sometimes you want to pay it in a blink. With AT&T Online Billing, it's your call. Log on now. It's free. When it comes to your long distance bill, ever space out and forget who you called? It's easy to track them down with AT&T Online Billing. Give us a click. Get an instant answer. Log on now. It's free. Stop by the Tommy Hilfiger fragrance counter for a complimentary sample of tea. Available at Macy's. Seven-year or 100,000 mile powertrain protection on 2002 Dodge Ram. Left field would certainly feel empty without Barry Bonds. He came to the Giants back in 1993 with another most valuable player season. And yes, he is truly the local kid who has made good. Fred Inglis has that story. It's been almost 20 years since Barry Bonds was a multi-sport star at San Mateo's Sarah High School. But even back then, his baseball coach Dave Stevens says Barry was destined for big things. He's so much bigger and stronger now than he was back then. But the abilities that he showed when he was in, in high school it pretty much determined that he could make the majors if he stayed healthy. Stevens says Barry was a free spirit in high school, but he never put himself above his teammates and Barry never tried to ride his father Bobby's coattails. He didn't get any special treatment. <laughs> he was just one of the players. That's all he wanted to be, but he, he wanted to be the best he possibly could be. And he got along great with the kids. I, I don't think I ever heard Barry uh, once ever, you know, rubbing in about I'm Bobby Bond's son. Uh, that, that, that wasn't Barry. However, after this much publicized encounter with a member of the Pittsburgh media in 1991, Barry received a very strong tongue lashing by his Pirates manager, Jim Leland. Now, 10 years later, Leland says that whole incident was overblown. It was just a, a misunderstanding that happened to get on national television. It was probably good for both of us, really. We hashed it out, and I think we both handled it like men. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, sometimes you, you, you get some bad publicity, and sometimes some of it's deserved. I, I don't disagree with that. But uh, there's a big heart there. There's, it's always been there. And there's a fierce competitive spirit there that's always been there. And I think Barry almost has to be a little bit mad at the world to, to perform the way he wants to perform. I believe that. Every time we thought we were too good, he brought us back down to, to reality, saying, you know, you know, don't let that dog bite you in the butt, thinking that just because you're hot right now, you, you know, calm down, you know, stick with your team and do the little things that you need to do. Well, we've been great friends, and I appreciate Barry's friendship uh, even more so than I do all the great moments he provided for me as a player. Stevens and Leland certainly helped round out Barry's character and baseball skills, but no doubt the biggest influences came from within Barry's own family circle. 
Mark Abanez tells us more. Here's the pitch to Willie. Swung on, hit deep to left. That one is way back, way back, way back. Well, that's just by number 600 for Willie Mays and the bye-bye baby Bonanza. No baseball conversation with Barry passes without mention of his all-pro pedigree. Father Bobby Bond and Godfather Willie Mays. Barry is fond of recounting stories of hanging around the Giants clubhouse way back when and gleaning knowledge from the Say Hey Kid. Willie has a slightly different recollection of those days. No, he didn't listen to that. <laughs> that was something strange. <laughs> no, he, he was just like any other kid, you know, like, uh, uh, he was like Little Beaver. I don't know if you would see the program called uh, Little Beaver, whatever. He was into everything, into the locker like room. Leave it to Beaver? Leave it to Beaver type of kid, you know, where he was very smart, knew what he was doing, always wanted to chew gum, always in my locker, always asking questions, always on the field with me. Wherever I go, he was right there with me. Uh, Pat would drop him off a lot, and uh, we would take care of him. Throughout the season, the question of pressure would always arise. Would it be too much to go after Mark McGuire's seemingly untouchable record of 70 home runs? But when you talk to the two men closest to Barry, pressure, not an issue. I think in Houston probably was, uh, was the roughest time because he was being walked so much. And it's probably the only time that I seen him get a little bit frustrated because he wasn't being pitched to. Uh, outside of that, he didn't get frustrated the entire year, but uh, going into the last game, it was like, are they going to give me the opportunity? It doesn't make no difference if I break the record, but are they going to give me the opportunity? And you could sense that in him. Everybody talking about home yeah. runs, home runs, it's, home runs. Let me explain that. There's no pressure hitting home runs. <laughs> the pressure is when you don't hit home runs. Uh, I think uh, people sometimes miss uh, the concept of what what is all about pressure. I know... Uh, when I played and hitting home runs, if you hit home runs every other day, where's the pressure at? The pressure's on the pitcher, not the guy that's hitting the home run. So they hit 73 home runs. He was just up there having a good time. Bobby Bonds has told me off camera many times that he saw the potential of his own son, Barry, as early as age 12. The athletic prowess was there. And much to his credit, Barry took full advantage of the star power that surrounded him. Barry got some great teaching along the way. You know, I mean, not just from me, but it's from, from Willie, uh, from McCovey, from Marshall, from Fuentes, from Davenport, from Jimmy Ray Hart. So many great people along the way. Gaylord Perry, talking to him, playing with him, making him fall in love with the game. Then his number one idol was, uh, was his godfather, and he watched Willie play. I was just his dad. He seen me every day. But he got to watch Willie play, and he got to see what great ball players did and how they did it in his own eyes. Barry's agent projects Bonds to play another four to five years, which could conceivably put his home run total over 800, meaning Willie's giant home run record would fall. Willie has no problem with that. A lot of people say, "Well, uh, why be? You know, why? Why do you want him to break the record? It's not that I want him to break the record. He's going to do it anyway. So I'm going to be there for him. Whenever he does it, I'll be right there for him, uh, regardless of where it is. Uh, hopefully, I can, you know, be on a plane or be somewhere where I can say hello and make sure that he's happy about it. But that's what he wants. And he want to. He, he want to say, Willie, look what I did." I know what he wants. He's going to say, look what I did now. Can you top that? And I'm going to say, no, I can't top that because I can't play anymore. Now that he is unquestionably the best all-around player in the game today, Giant fans, of course, are worried he may go elsewhere. But if he listens to his godfather, well, there is hope. He'll finish his days as a Giant. I would like for him to stay right here if he can because now if he goes to New York or goes somewhere else, he's got to move his family. He's got to, you know, buy a house here, buy it. The money's not the problem. It's the, the accolation of, of doing, moving back and forward all the time. So he's still home. He's doing, you know, a wonderful job. He doesn't have to go anywhere. So I'm looking for him to be here, right here. I know that he would love to stay here if things can work out. Um, his family's here. His friends are here. He grew up here. 
Uh, I don't know what the, what the Giants are going to do. I mean, you know, that's not my, my end <laughs> of their game. I just do what they ask me to do. But uh, uh, they're going to have to sit down with Barry and, and Scott Burroughs, just like I, I guess. And I, like I said, I'm not his agent uh, like anybody else and sit down. But uh, his number one choice is here in San Francisco. As we continue on the road to 73, Barry says, to know me is to like me, and the fans of San Francisco finally do. Um, I think they had opportunity to see me in press conferences and, and speaking and talking and, and my own feelings on how I really felt. I think that's what, what helped. They say the new car has powers magical. They say once you sit inside, you turn into a different person. In this car, I wish to ride. The all-new Lexus ES300, a new world of luxury. At your Northern California Lexus dealer. On any remaining 2001 model, then get an additional $500 cash back direct from Nissan. If it's in stock, it's got $500 cash back. And say hello to 0% financing on all Frontiers and select Sentras. Hurry to your Bay Area Nissan dealers before the goodbye event says buy for good. Nissan. Driven. It's no secret Barry Bonds puts fans in these stands, and for many reasons, it's just logical that he would return as a San Francisco giant. But in this day and age, it's not so much about common sense as it is dollars and cents. And Joe Fonzie talks to the Giants' men on the money. It promises to be the most scrutinized personnel move in an uncertain baseball offseason. When a home run record hitting most valuable player is loose Burrow's on the speed. free agent market, the usual big spending teams start lining up the Brinks trucks. But the Giants don't think that scenario has to apply to the signing of Barry Bonds. For one reason, they feel both parties are motivated to keep Bonds in San Francisco. The facts are Barry wants to stay in San Francisco, and the Giants want to retain Barry for, uh, for the future and have him finish a Giant. Now, that doesn't get, get a deal done, but it goes a long way toward taking uh, you know, the, toward the dynamic of, of getting a deal done. We are going to be engaged in earnest to, to get something done. Uh, we know that obligation. Uh, we know it's going to take some time. We're going to be patient with it. And we just hope that uh, his home here has a greater impact on his decision making. That makes it sound like the negotiations will be about more than just who has the fattest wallet. But with several baseball economic issues only beginning to be addressed this offseason, the signing of Bonds is a process that won't happen quickly, no matter who he ends up with. But he has made it clear in the past, getting to a World Series before his career ends is a priority. Last five years, you know, a lot of clubs would wish we'd, they'd had the success we had. We just haven't taken, you know, it to the next level or, or cashed in on our opportunities. So it's not about spending money. If Barry's going to wait around to see who we sign for how much money, um, and quote, thinking that uh, you're going to immediately get into the Mexican hat dance by throwing all the money into the ring, uh, then he needs to go somewhere else. The Giants are hoping it's more about a place where Bonds can feel wanted and at home even after his playing days are over. There's going to be a lot of money offered by the Giants. It's, uh, hopefully it's a legacy contract where Barry will see this not just uh, as a contract during his playing days, but there'll be... Uh, an emotional and hopefully a physical uh, attachment to the Giants uh, beyond his playing days. That would put Bonds in the company of his father, his godfather Willie Mays, and one of the men who he passed this year on the all-time home run list, Willie McCovey. With the final word, Giant President Peter McGowan. Well, we've surprised a lot of people here, I think, over the last nine years. I mean, people never thought we could get Barry Bonds on this team in the first place. 
and I think a lot of people felt we probably weren't going to be able to keep the Giants in San Francisco. And a lot of people said we couldn't win an election to build a new ballpark. And then people said, if you do all that, you can't put a competitive team on the field. Don't count us out. The Giants are hoping the counting will be done in a little different way in this negotiation. What are the chances of Barry staying a San Francisco Giant? You'll hear it from Barry himself as we continue on the road to 73. It's Thanksgiving weekend, and to celebrate, your Toyota dealer is offering 0% APR financing on a generous helping of great cars and trucks. Choose from Sienna, Avalon, Solara, Echo, Celica, Corolla, Forerunner, and Tundra. Big selection, 0% financing. But you'd better hurry, because Thanksgiving weekend and 0% financing end Monday. So see your Toyota dealer today. The instant you walk in the door at Good Guys this Thanksgiving weekend, you start saving big. You get instant discounts on everything you buy instantly with any purchase over $200. From $25 all the way up to $500 in instant discounts. Get your holiday shopping done early because all of your purchases add up to create your very own sale. The instant you buy a big screen TV, digital camcorder, DVD, or a home theater system, you get up to a $500 discount instantly. The more you buy, the more you save instantly. Better stuff, fiercely competitive prices, Good Guys. This holiday, stay connected to the people who matter most. With the Shared Advantage plan from AT&T Wireless, you get unlimited local calling between plan members. So dad could talk to mom, mom could talk to the kids, and the kids could talk to each other as often as they like. Start with two phone lines for $59.99 a month and add up to three more for only $9.99 each. You can also get up to five free phones with nationwide long distance included and plenty of minutes to go around. All for life. Visit attwireless.com today for a gift that will have the whole family talking. Barry Bonds thrilled thousands of fans with his shots over this very wall at Pacific Bell Park. Now, whether or not he'll be back to continue that relationship in a Giants uniform is a matter of great speculation. But you know what? There's nothing like hearing it from the horse's mouth. Here's Barry Bonds. I think in the past, they never really had opportunity to see me on a regular basis because I am a very quiet person. I am a person that to myself. I, I go to work. I like to go home and be with my family. Um, I think this year, the separation from the years before this year is the fact that I was in the media all the time. They got to hear from my words all the time. That it wasn't he said, she said, this article came out, this, and they were boasting their opinion on what all the writers were um, saying about myself. Um, I think they had opportunity to see me in press conferences and, and speaking and talking and, and my own feelings on how I really felt. I think that's what, what helped, is um, the press conferences helped me and, and bringing me together with the fans here in San Francisco. Throughout the season, Bonds made it clear he wants to stay in the Bay Area. But as the reality of the situation surfaces, he sounds more resigned to the possibility of having to move. I mean, I was raised here. I mean, what, what greater story could you have winning where you were raised? Um, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I mean, I'm, I'm a realistic person, you know, but it, it, I can go back and when I'm old and retired, you know, and I can tell my grandchildren them, you know, I went to Sarah High School, I grew up here and won here, and you know, you can go through all those whole stories. Um, if you can't, you can't, you know. I see, you know, I had a great run here, had a good time, um, I had great friends, great people, but life goes on. Bonds may come out of the free agent free-for-all as the highest paid player of all time. But as far as the label best player of all time, he's got a different way of processing that argument. It's a great honor. I mean, anytime you're compared to those great athletes, um, I mean, just being compared to them, you've had a great career. You don't have to achieve more than them. You just have to be compared. In the baseball world, in, in ours as players, and. Um, our set of clubhouse rules, 
being compared to them, you're exceptional. If you're compared to Willie Mays, like, you're an exceptional player. Um, but I, I, I ain't satisfied with that. I want to do better. I want to do as well or better. I mean, that's what I play for yeah, every day. Yeah, I like your day. comment. You said it, I was satisfied. I quit. I might as well quit. There's no need to play anymore. I mean, if you're number one, what are you going to do? If that's what they say, where else are there to go? No, I, I need to win a World Series ring. Then everything that I've accomplished, I feel that will all sink in to all my individual achievements is winning a World Series. Then I'll be able to reflect on everything at one time. But right now, I have unfinished business. That's to win. Barry seems plenty relaxed as the decision sits in front of him. What team to choose? What salary would satisfy him? Who has the best chance to win his long sought after World Series title? But as far as making that fateful decision, he's not concerned. God help me, that's all. That, that's all I live for. God will help me make that decision. Um, whenever I think in my life things get worse, <laughs> always he lifts me up again. When I think that I'm down and, and nothing can get better in my life, something always comes back around. And um, just lucky. I'm just very lucky. Very, very lucky. In a perfect